Avenue starts right now. Hey there, good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is March 26. It is March 26, and we know probably you are doing the social distancing and also staying, staying, was it stay home, work safe? Mm -hmm. That's what we're calling the order. So everybody's trying to find things to do. And here's the thing, some good is coming out of this for our pet population. We've got a good problem. We were always preaching about the need for uh, people to step up and, and adopt uh, pets and you know dogs, cats, everything. Unusual trend taking place in some larger cities, including New York. Yes, in New York, the city's animal shelters are experiencing a huge uptick in adoption and, po and pet foster applications as many bored New Yorkers are stuck at home because of the lockdown. Animal rescue groups Muddy Paws Rescue and Best Friends Animal Society told Bloomberg, Bloomberg News that shelters they work with are almost completely out of cats and dogs after a surge in interest just in the past two weeks. They said, for the moment, we definitely do not have any dogs left to match, which is a great problem to have, they say. However, some rescue groups are worried that uptick in pet adoptions could lead to an increase in surrendered pets if people lose their jobs amid the crisis. Of course, the jobs report came out today. Nearly three million new jobless claims. No big surprise there. No, no big surprise there. Well, it's hopefully in the next few months we're going to get to turn this around. But the interest in the four-legged friends extends beyond New York. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, ASPCA, said in Los Angeles, 70% increase in animals going into foster care. That's an amazing trend, isn't it? And they're not the only ones. Pet supply companies like Chewy also reaping the benefits at a time many businesses are suffering due to the pandemic. The company says its stock is up at least 7% this year so far. So uh, if you are at home and bored and alone and have a little love to share, why don't you get one of our local animals into your home. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. More than 1,000 people have now died in the U.S. 200 have died in the last 24 hours. There is some good news. The rate of people entering the hospital in New York appears to be slowing down slightly. Bipartisanship. Just before midnight in our nation's capital, the Senate approved one of the largest emergency aid packages in the U.S. history. The $2 trillion stimulus includes $250 billion for direct payments to individuals and families. The New York City corrections officer in his 30s says for over a week now, he's been experiencing a sickness like no other. I felt like my throat, like my lungs, everything had like tightened up. More than 200 service members have tested positive for COVID-19. That has led to U.S. forces, including troops, Marines, airmen, naval officers, and enlisted having to stay where they are. Unusual punishment for people who ignore it. The stay-at-home order, police in India are making them do push-ups and squats. G20 leaders are coming together to discuss the coronavirus. The virtual meeting will be hosted by Saudi Arabia's king. He will bring together world leaders to, quote, unite efforts towards a global response. Let them feel good in any way. At least put food on their tables. That's the owner of a pizza shop in Los Angeles giving out free pizza to hospital workers and police officers. Videos of surface showing neighbors sharing beer being delivered by remote control cars. These people obviously taking social distancing very seriously. Today was supposed to be opening day yeah. in Major League Baseball. But instead, sports fans now have marble racing. One race got 700,000 likes on Twitter. One man in Connecticut found a creative way to spend time with his grandmother, who's in a senior living facility. Of course, mm. social distancing. They played tic-tac-toe and hangman by drawing <laughs> on the window. I forgot Love about that. hangman. Love that. Aww. Love the remote control car thing. This is so that's hilarious. Yeah, no, it's great. I wish I had uh, a pond in my neighborhood so I could do remote control boats because that's kind of where I'm at with things. Yeah, because you, well, you would need a remote control kayak for fishing. That, do they exist? I don't think so. You can invent one. Okay. <laughs> Let's take you outside with live cam. What do you think? They do now. You just invented it. You made a lot of money off that. I know they have remote control sailboats and other stuff like that, probably yeah. battleships, but kayaks, we may be in new territory here. There you go. Go on Shark Tank, like next week. Right. Uh, we're looking at some pretty warm temperatures this morning. Right now we're sitting at 71 degrees at the airport, 65, Kerrville, 63, Rock Springs. There is a little bit of fog out there. So far it hasn't been all that bad, certainly not as bad as it was yesterday. In the forecast, uh, we'll see temperatures uh, pretty warm next couple of days uh, with a chance of maybe some showers as we get into uh, Saturday as, as the frontal battery comes through. Pollen count is in and it is not good. Oak jumped up into the very high category. 
At a count of 24,100, this is the highest count we've seen in several years. Uh, so just not great. And I would imagine that uh, we're still going to see some high counts next couple days. So be aware. Mold is moderate. Mulberry, pecan, willow, sycamore, they're all on the pollen count too. Uh, so there's a lot going on there. Visibility-wise, still looking very good here across Bexar County. We are seeing some lower visibility out towards Hondo and even Uvalde. Seeing some fog this morning. Forecast calls for a high of 88 degrees. We will lose the cloud cover, but it will probably take another couple of hours here before that happens. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now we're looking at 37 and Jones Avenue. Light traffic out there to be expected uh, as the week goes on here. We'll keep an eye on any potential traffic trouble spots. Top stories that we're following for you today. The Texas Board of Pardons and Parole has denied parole for the man found guilty of being an accomplice in the killing of three law enforcement officers in Atascosa County back in 1999. Yeah, many of us remember that brutal ambush. It comes after the Atascosa County Sheriff personally launched a campaign aimed at blocking the parole in January. Kenneth Vodachotsky was found guilty of capital murder and sentenced to death by lethal injection for the killings of two deputies and a state trooper. His conviction was later overturned and he pleaded guilty to three 30 year sentences to run concurrently. He was up for parole this month, but the Texas board received more than 2,000 parole protest letters and they denied that request. Right now, Badajotsky is scheduled to be released in 2029 if he's never paroled. This morning, San Antonio City Council holding a special meeting. The only item in the agenda, the coronavirus pandemic. Council members are expected to vote on whether to extend the city's stay home, work safe order. The meeting started just a few minutes ago. Right now, the order is scheduled to last until April 9th, but City Council could extend that by a few more weeks. You can watch the live stream of the meeting on our website at KSAT.com. We do have a crew there. We'll bring you an update in our later newscasts. San Antonio isn't the only South Texas city under orders to stay home. New Braunfels stay home work safe order now officially in effect as of midnight. Similar to San Antonio and Bear County's orders, hospitals, grocery stores, gas stations are exempt. The order also says residents are allowed to enjoy the outdoors while maintaining social distancing. The city of New Braunfels also taking extra measures to keep the community safe. That includes putting signs near park playgrounds and closing them down. Similar it runs at 11 tonight, uh, runs through, starts at 11 tonight rather, and runs through April 10th. One big difference with this order is that it includes a curfew for residents. People will not be allowed to be on the street between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. unless they're going to work at an essential business. Law enforcement officials will be able to issue citations to anyone who violates the order. Again, that is up in San Marcos. Governor Greg Abbott will be having a press conference this afternoon to provide an update on the coronavirus pandemic in our state. Reps from the Texas Department of State Health Services and the Texas Division on Emergency Management will be there. Press conferences to give an update on Texas's efforts to combat COVID-19 and is scheduled to happen at 2 o'clock at the state capitol. You can also watch that live right here on KSAT and online at KSAT.com. Hey, a reminder, everybody, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is holding a community blood drive this week. Health officials say blood donations are considered essential operations. They're exempt from the stay home work safe order. Blood banks around the city have been reporting a high number of cancellations since the order went into effect. So now they're urging people to keep their appointments. The blood drive happening today, tomorrow from 9 to 2. Donations appointment only. We have all the information to sign up on our website at KSAT.com. All right, with day two of the stay at home, work safe order in place, some may be feeling a little bit stir crazy at home. One way to deal with the productivity related anxiety during the pandemic through, is through exercise at home. You don't need a TV or computer. All you need is your phone. Alicia Barrera is live in North San Antonio with what a local yoga studio is doing to keep its customers active. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, all you need is your phone and then also Instagram and following Black Swan Yoga San Antonio. So this is their Instagram page here. Then you'll click on their icon, view, watch live now. And then what you'll see is an instructor right there from the home, from the comfort of their home, backyard or whatever it is. And you can follow along and flow for free. And to talk more about this initiative uh, that they've launched is owner of Black Swan Yoga San Antonio, Mrs. Jamie Scope. She's actually following along with one of the flows available. So at what point did you all decide to do um, Instagram specifically? When we order a couple days ago, actually yesterday it was, we decided to switch our live streaming, which was happening at the studio on YouTube, and um, decided to make it safe and comfortable for our teachers 
um, and then we switch over to Instagram Live uh, for the shelter in place order that happened. And how easy is it for people to follow along? Because perhaps, you know, some people are at home and they're like, I want to stay active, but I've never done yoga, never practiced. So what can they expect? They can expect some beginner classes, they can expect some flow classes, but really the best part is happening right now is where you're not um, surrounded by people who you know, know what they're doing or don't know what they're doing. Um, you can really find some comfort doing it at home um, and start a new practice maybe or continue the practice that you already had. And you're of course you know, helping customers, but also the big focus, the teachers right now, they yeah. need our help. Yeah, 100%. Right now our teachers are completely out of work. We don't know how long we'll be closed for. We're really hoping and praying soon. Um, but right now our free classes are free, um, but we're taking donations. Any donation helps, and what we're doing with these donations is supporting our teachers 100% by them. So um, really anything that, um, anything counts. Perfect, thank you so much. Well, we'll be sticking around here. 9.30 we'll be live again with Jamie Scope, and then we'll be showing you exactly how you can support the teachers, how you can give that donation live. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. That's time right now, 909, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. There are conflicting tallies from the state and CDC on coronavirus cases in Texas. So who's right? That's coming up in our Tribune Thursday report. Remember the case at 12 family finally back home in San Antonio after being put under quarantine in Argentina. We spoke with uh, Sebastian, or we will speak with Sebastian Hovell about his long trek home coming up later in the newscast. And it's a program bringing joy to seniors at nursing homes in Alaska. We're going to tell you how you can participate in Alaska Caring Notes. All right, the jobs numbers came out. So we've got uh, roughly 300, or rather 3 million more Americans now filing new jobless claims. But good news right now, taking a look at the market, it is up. It's up almost 800 points at 21,982. Of course, this is as the House takes up the stimulus bill. $2 trillion passed by the Senate. We're back with a look at a therapy dog providing some much needed emotional support to doctors up in Denver. Take a look. Wynn is a service dog in training. She's giving cuddles and affection to healthcare workers at Rose Medical Center. Aw, Wynn is on call in the social worker's office for staffers who need some puppy love to relieve the stress. Don't worry, though, everyone who comes in contact with Wynn thoroughly washes their hands first. Speaking of healthcare workers, we want to take a moment to say thank you once again to all the people on the front lines around San Antonio during the pandemic. Let's take a look at some of their pictures. This is a group of surgical ICU nurses at the Audie Murphy VA Hospital. And this person didn't provide a name, but the picture says, taking care of my first COVID-19 patient. To submit a picture of a healthcare worker in your life, go to KSAT.com, search for Community Gallery, and we sure appreciate all you are doing. Well, it can be a lonely time for people in nursing homes with no one allowed to visit them due to the coronavirus outbreak. But the Alaska State Hospital Nursing Home Association wants to do something to spread cheer. They launched something called Alaska Carrying Notes. Anyone can write notes, upload a drawing, or send a video to residents in nursing homes. The association says it's an easy thing to do that could make someone's day a little brighter. Write notes, film videos, and then digitally upload them to our website and then we distribute them to all the nursing homes as a way to encourage and kind of give that human touch to residents in this time where really visitors are not allowed in. Anyone can participate in the program. Just go to ashnha.com, complete an online form with your name and message. The association will make sure it gets to an Alaska nursing home. Yeah, it was kind of an interesting address. It's, it's ashnha.com. A-S-H. That's the, yes. And it's there on you your go. screen right there. We go. Perfect. Thank you, Jamie. So it's right there for you. And uh, everybody can take a, maybe a minute and do something like this, that's right? Very, I mean, it's a, imagine the happiness that's going to give to the people in the nursing home. All right. Uh, imagine the happiness once we get past what's turning out to be an awful oak season here in South Texas. Yesterday was like record highs. Yeah, we thought it would get worse today. We didn't know it would do this. It got up to something like 24,000 today. That's the latest. Palm so that's count. today. That's not even yesterday. That that's is today. Yeah, the, 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 the today's number is the highest it's been in, in several years, we've been told. You now. said right. years. Years. Uh, so this is, yeah, if you're uh, suffering from oak pollen or you have allergy to oak pollen, this is not good. Yeah, I, me too. <laughs> I think we're all in the same boat, and especially with uh, all this going on with COVID. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at the uh, oak season. And again, this is not updated. It should say 24,000. That's today's number. It's in the very high category. We're closing in on the peak. 
My hope is that as we get into the next couple of weeks, we'll start to get on the downside here and start to see the numbers go down. But today is just not good. Okay, satellite picture shows we've got plenty of cloud cover here over Bear County right now. We've got the low clouds. Looks like we've got some high clouds riding over top of that. So it's going to be a cloudy start. We should see some sun, though, by the afternoon. 71 degrees at the airport, 70 Randolph, 71 New Braunfels, 69 right now in Seguin. Up in the hill country, sun starting to peak out around Rock Springs, 63 degrees there. And then down to the south and east, also starting to see some sun popping out. So places like Kennedy, Gonzales, you may start to see a little bit of sun, and these numbers will go up fairly quickly. Clouds uh, will have a big impact on how quickly these temperatures jump up today. But we're still thinking upper 80s here in San Antonio this afternoon. Take a look at the time lapse. We've seen some haziness today, but not a lot of fog, 71 degrees at the uh, airport right now. Dew point is at 66. And you can see there we've had maybe a couple peaks of sun even here in San Antonio. South Southeast Julie winds at about nine miles per hour. Visibility is pretty good for most of us. The one spot where we are noticing some fog out there around U Valley where visibility is down about a mile and a half. Temperatures, as we mentioned, uh, 60s and 70s for the most part in dew points. Uh, well, they are going to be high today and tomorrow, so it's going to be muggy. That uh, that doesn't change until Saturday. We got a frontal boundary through here Saturday morning. Once that happens, we'll get a couple showers with that, and then the uh, dry air will pour in for Saturday and most of Sunday. Picks back up, though, Monday. We'll have another chance of rain Monday with added humidity, and then it falls off again with another frontal battery. So there will be some days where we get some drier air back in here. It's not going to be humid all the way through. Forecast high temperatures today right around 88 here in town. We'll get some much higher numbers. That's showing 100. That's the, the, the computer model saying that. I don't know that it will be that warm in Carrizo Springs, but mid 90s certainly possible later today. Reason for all the warmth lately, this ridge of high pressure, which has really been close enough to us to really influence the weather. It's now starting to move away, though, and uh, it's getting pushed out by our next storm system, which will move across the plains. This is a quick mover, and that's why we're not expecting a lot of rain out of it. It brings a front in on Saturday. Uh, in the meantime, tomorrow morning, we will see more low clouds and fog. That burns off into partly cloudy afternoon. So let's fast forward now to 9 a.m. Saturday. Here comes our front. We've got a broken line of some showers, maybe a thunderstorm. And we're just not going to see a whole lot of rain out of this. It's just too brief of a window. And then by, uh, say, 2 o'clock, rain's actually moving out, and we're getting clearing west to east. We'll see some of that drier air funneling in Saturday afternoon. 88 degrees today. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then uh, coming up tomorrow, we'll go uh, 87. 20% chance of rain early on Saturday. 80 both Saturday and Sunday. And then another chance of rain shows up on Monday with a 30% chance of showers. We'll be right back. As the coronavirus situation evolves, so do the headlines and questions about things like the latest statistics and compliance with stay at home orders. Our media partners at the Texas Tribune in Austin, like us, they're working hard to get some answers for you. The Trib's Alana Rocha joins us for our weekly update. Good morning, Alana. Good morning, Alana. Number of cases there are conflicting tallies uh, on the cases here in Texas. The governor has thrown out some numbers that vary greatly from what the state health department or even the CDC are reporting. So I guess the question is who's right and what is the state doing to consolidate these sources? Well, this week the state launched a, a new system on Tuesday to try and bring all these numbers into a single figure. Uh, the discrepancy lies in how uh, the different jurisdictions uh, look at these numbers or categorize the, the people being tested. Uh, the state counts people uh, by their county of residence. Uh, so say here in University of Texas at Austin, a student tests positive, but they're from Houston. Harris County would get that tally, not Travis County. Now they're deferring to uh, the county health departments in launching this system. And as of Wednesday around 5 p.m., they the state had nearly uh, a thousand cases with uh, 12 deaths counted. But no matter the figures, uh, experts say the count is likely uh, well under the actual uh, number of cases just because of a shortage of testing and things like that. Yeah, we do know those numbers are going to go up and drastically. And a push to curb the spread of this virus. Actually, a lot of major cities across Texas have issued what are called stay at home orders. The governor hasn't done it statewide yet, but he's now signaling, signaling rather that he might consider it. 
Yeah, uh, at a press conference on Tuesday, he noted wherever he was coming from en route to that news conference that he he was a little unnerved, <clears throat> excuse me, at just how many people he saw out and about on the roads here in Austin that has one of those cities that's issued a, a stay-at-home order and that he's uh, open to looking at maybe stricter enforcement of uh, these orders or, or a statewide order potentially. Uh, Lana, uh, the, the uh, governor's news conference Tuesday was his first since President Trump took a newly urgent tack against letting the pandemic destroy the U.S. economy, saying he wants to get the country back to work as soon as possible. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick echoed a similar sentiment to the president's. What did the governor have to say about their comments? Uh, yeah, well, he uh, didn't address them maybe directly. He just said, you know, he's singing a different tune and he's deferring to public health officials and said the quickest way to reopening the economy is to following their advice to try and curb the spread of uh, COVID-19. All right, now we know a lot of the headlines have been coming out of the city centers, but the Texas Tribune looked at rural, rural hospitals and the unique challenges they face in the weeks and the months ahead. So what did your reporting find? Yeah, that, uh, you know, since 2010, 26 rural hospitals here in the state have closed. Uh, you know, they've been hit by several factors, uh, you know, demographics, people moving to uh, the city centers, a slash in Medicare payments. Uh, and then right now with the delay of elective surgeries, which, you know, can be the most lucrative uh, revenue stream for rural hospitals, they... Um, you know, don't have that money to prepare for this. And, and this all could hasten the closure of more rural hospitals around the state. And we know you're home right now. you got kiddos in the background. We met yeah. Remy a little bit earlier off camera. You're doing yes. a great job, Alana. Uh, talk to us real quick about this live event that you guys have planned as part of your continuing coverage. Sure. Uh, vaccine expert uh, Dr. Peter Hotez. Uh, this is part of our virtual series. Of course, we're keeping in line with the social distancing and not having uh, live studio audiences. So now at 8 a.m., Texas Tribune uh, Dot org. We will be uh, talking to yeah. Dr. Peter Hotez, uh, answering your questions. And if you miss it, uh, then you can uh, watch it again. Again, texastribune.org. You're also covering how the candidates are going to campaign during this time of, uh, I guess, the coronavirus disease. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, this this uh, infection is is affecting every part of life, and uh, that includes the election cycle, filing deadlines, and everything else. Part of my toddler uh, in the background, and so we're looking how campaigning is going in the wake of the coronavirus. Well, Remy is absolutely adorable. Remy, if you can hear us, which you, I don't know if you can, here you know. Yeah, cut, cut your mom some slack. She's doing a great job. <laughs> I'll let her know. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Alana. Take care of yourself. All right. You too. She's a cutie. Uh, with steely determination, Alana pressed on. Well, a reporter of Montana going viral for his reaction. After some bison, got a little too close for comfort. Or maybe the reporter was a little too close to the bison. That's coming up. Video you don't want to miss. Musicians are not the only ones sharing their talents with the world. How one Mississippi woman is using her gift of singing to bring joy to her neighbors. And after getting stuck in Argentina for a mandated quarantine, a member of the KSAT family is back home. He joins us live to tell us more about his experiences. We're gonna chat with Sebastian coming up right here on GMSA at nine. Welcome back everybody, it's now 9.30. Well, a member of the KSAT family is finally back home in San Antonio after being put under quarantine in Argentina. Sebastian Hobel works in the uh, IT department here at KSAT. We couldn't live without him. He was in Argentina to visit family when the country declared a mandatory quarantine due to the coronavirus. Well, after more than two weeks, Sebastian finally managed to make it back. He joins us live from his house to tell us more about his experience, and we're really glad that you're home. I'm, I'm really glad to be home. I'm, it's, it's amazing to see you guys on TV and actually be talking to you guys again. It's 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 real it's real fun sebastian paint a picture for us of of what your experience was like down there you you mentioned that you were down there to see family what how did things unfold was it was it over a period of days or, or did it happen like really really quick well yeah i, I arrived there or beginning of the week two weeks ago and uh just from the onset it started getting some news about things possibly shutting down possibly going through a total quarantine in the country just to prevent things. But for the first few days, it was, it was pretty nice. You know, I got there, got to see some family, got to see some people I haven't seen in years, and my goddaughter, especially since I was there for her 15th birthday. And it was just an amazing feeling just to see family that I haven't seen in about four when, or five years. When were you scheduled to return home, and how did you find out you weren't coming home? I was scheduled to come back 
uh, March 18th. Should have would have been arriving 19th here in San Antonio, but uh, around March 13th is when we were told that the country was going into total quarantine and flights were being canceled, and there was just little information coming out as to whether or not we were going to be able to travel because uh, I was put on quarantine myself since I arrived into the country and from a, what they considered a hotspot. So they put me on quarantine and I isolated myself in my cousin's daughter's room just so I could protect the people around me and, you know, follow the protocols that they were put in place. So uh, you had a quarantine yourself. I'm How did you finally manage to make it home? Well, uh, a lot of uh, calls to the airlines, a lot of different airlines uh, trying to get different information to see who was flying out to what country, to what cer certain areas. Uh, I was originally supposed to fly out to Peru, and had I done that, I'd probably be out there right now outside of the airport wondering whether or not I'd be flying home because they shut down completely. Uh, I think Argentina's done that yesterday as well. So. It was just so, you know, it was so scary because you never knew what was coming next. You, you just expected things to work out. But if you weren't on the phone calls with the airlines, letting people know that you're trying to get home, you know, whatever so way possible. What was your path home? Uh, well, eventually I, I found a way with Latam Airlines to uh, from Buenos Aires to Chile. And then from Chile, I took a flight with Delta all the way to Atlanta from Atlanta to Houston, Houston back to San Antonio. It was uh, it was a lot of moving pieces around and trying to make sure that all the flights were available. Uh, well, when I got to the airport, some of the flights that I was scheduled on were canceled that very same day, so I had to move things around that same day. Same, yeah, same. You, you've really had to go with the flow, Sebastian. We're so glad you're healthy and home. Uh, we, and we'd even done stories recently about how so many Americans were stranded overseas and were finding it impossible to get home. Some of them still are. And let me ask you a question. Do you have to quarantine here now again? Yes, uh, that's what it's advised, and I'm, I'm going to comply with that just to make sure, you know, I, I, I don't put anybody at risk. And I think it's a responsible thing to do as well, just to make sure that uh, I'm complying. I, I don't want to put anybody at risk, you know, Real public quick. safety is uh, ab absolutely yeah. no absolutely and we, we do appreciate that and you are doing the wise thing just real quick because we're almost out of time tell me about what how people treated each other and what that was like and I saw the masks and it looked like y'all were in a pretty tight closed environment and lot on the planes yeah I mean there are for the most part people were receptive to trying to help each other out give each other information that you know they might have known that I didn't know and, and vice versa I met a guy named Jerry that helped me catch that flight from Chile to Argentina he's the one that informed me about that flight and we were able to help each other out, you know, him with the language barrier. I was able to, you know, talk to the uh, customer service for him while he gave me some information about trying to get home. So well, we, we really helped each other out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sebastian, we're so glad you're home and you're safe. And, and now we're going to get you through this quarantine and we'll get you back at work as soon as safely possible. Sebastian Hobel, if you're just now joining us from our IT team, joining us live from his house after returning from Argentina. Welcome home. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. It's a pleasure to be back and it's great to be back. I uh, hope to see you guys in a few weeks. We, the hope, we hope so too, buddy. We hope we so too. Right. To it. Thanks, Sebastian. All right, Thank from you. Sebastian's home to outside with live cam. It is already 71 degrees. Yeah, you're looking at live cam there. Yeah, it's it's hazy, almost foggy. We're not quite seeing the fog that we saw yesterday, but there's a little bit here and there, and it's warm too. 71 degrees here in San Antonio, as you mentioned. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. We're going to see some of the fog this morning clouds, but a hot afternoon. The, the skies will clear, and we'll see sunny skies, or at least mostly sunny skies later today. Tomorrow, a little bit more cloud cover. We'll do this uh, on repeat, basically. We'll get more clouds and more fog tomorrow morning, uh, but it does stay warm. The change arrives on Saturday. We'll get a frontal battery here. It'll be cooler and drier. And by cooler, I mean lower 80s versus upper 80s. But still, it is a difference. And we'll get the, those two points to lower, which will feel much nicer. Again, right now, pretty warm here in Bear County. 70s to go around. 66 Comfort, 66 Bandera, 67 in Tarpley. And there is a little bit of fog in spots. We've seen that around Uvalde this morning. Looks like a few places there in Bandera towards Kerr County. Also seeing some patchy fog this morning. Forecast up to 88 later today. Southerly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about the weekend forecast and also another chance of rain next week coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. All right. Thanks, sir. Real quick look at traffic and we've got construction out there at I-10 and the Dominion.
No gym during coronavirus? No problem. They're making cyberspace the place to get your workout in. As instructors for Camp Gladiator, Tori Ellis and Danielle Palmieri Brown are used to sweating it out in open spaces. But with the coronavirus quarantines, holding group workouts in person is no longer an option. We got one more round. I got to look at how they're using social media now to keep the masses moving. You can see it on our website, ksat.com. Camp Gladiator, not the only av av option available for people. Just read what's on the screen, Mark. Uh, Black Swan <laughs> Yoga San Antonio is also offering accessible and affordable workouts. Alicia Barrera is there live with the owner to learn more. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning, you guys. Well, again, all you need is the phone, Instagram, and then you can follow here live. Right now, Black Swan Yoga San Antonio is live. We have instructor Eileen here. She's leading the flow. And then over here, we met up this morning with owner of Black Swan Yoga San Antonio, Jamie Scope. Jamie, perhaps at the beginning, this was a tough call to make, but you mentioned that this has actually offered more variety for your students. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in the studio, we're uh, restricted with certain things we can do or as often as we want to do. Um, but we've been able to offer more beginner classes. I even did a prenatal class. We're offering more slow flow classes throughout the week. So I think it's uh, exciting people and getting people on their mat maybe whereas they haven't before. So, and then maybe when we open our doors again, they can um, show face and come in and be excited with confidence um, starting your yoga practice in a slightly different way. And this morning you were actually following along with one of the flows. So just how is it being out here or even in your bedroom, but being able now to step out here uh, by the lake and yeah. be, you know, in fresh air and in practice. Yeah, well, I think everyone is inside quite a bit right now. So uh, I encourage people to maybe try a different location outside by their pool or outside by the park um, and just kind of feel the fresh air as much as they can because that's what we need right now. <laughs> and last question for you. We talk about mantras during yoga. What has been yours and maybe what can other people follow along to get through COVID-19? Um, one day at a time work is working for me. Um, that's all we can do right now is support each other one day at a time and uh, we'll get through this together. And just so you know, they're a donation-based studio, so they're keeping that along, keeping that going for their teachers. So if you're already on their Instagram page, it's real easy. Right next to it, you'll find how to donate for the teachers. And then there's a way to make it custom. So you can donate $5, $25, whatever speaks to you in order to support the teachers because right now I'm sure they need all the help that they can get. And so we can step up, be active, and also pay it forward. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Boy, the winds are whipping out there. Yeah, they are. Thank you, Alicia. We, you know, we talk a lot about trying to stay busy and entertain yourself and on this time when everybody has to be home. But what about if it's not just your birthday, but the big one, 21 years old, 21 and you years can't old. go to a bar? Nope, can't do it. A video showing a family creating a club quarantine in their garage has gone viral on social media after originally being posted on TikTok. All right, this is a 50-second clip that has been shared a bazillion times. The young man in this video turned 21 the day before. His parents felt bad he couldn't go to a bar or nightclub, so they transformed the garage into a 21-and-up establishment, at least, of course, to the, the post, uh, the posted outside at bar's door. Let me try it again. Outside the door, it said bar. Right. In Must the video? 21 or older. Yep. So it's been viewed more than 370,000 times on Twitter alone as of Wednesday. Man's dad seen as the bouncer. Dad's heard asking for ID, which he then dutifully <laughs> checks with his flashlight. So the newly turned 21-year-old then travels inside where his mom turned bartender cheerfully greets him and offers him a free shot as part of the club's birthday policy. We let the bouncer, the waitress, and I do one with you, the bartender mom says, as she pours four shots. All right. Everybody on Twitter was just tickled pink with it and got even emotional about this sweet idea. The son shared their own family's silly dinner time and drinking antics. Oh, that's so fun during Look the quarantine. Look at dad as the bouncer. I think that's awesome. Club quarantine for his birthday. Did they say the kiddo's name? They didn't, did they? No, they didn't say any no. of their names. Well, happy 21 years old. And I'm glad you got to have a drink at a bar. And that went viral like crazy. 300 and something times. It was just a thousand times. Yep. 941, wow. 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A Mississippi woman is sharing her singing talents with neighbors while she decided to drive around singing various songs. We are back with a video that is sure to make you laugh. Watch what happened when a reporter in Montana spotted a bison. Montana 3. Oh, my God. Oh my God. 
Oh no, I ain't messing with you. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not funny. It's not funny. Okay, Actually, so it, is. it is funny. It's All right, the funny. reporter from NBC Montana, KTVT, KTVM, was getting ready to do some stuff at Yellowstone National Park when he noticed the bison. <laughs> Says the animals got a little close for comfort, so he decided to bail. Oh, he bailed all right. Bison attacks aren't exactly common, but the animals have been known to charge people even when not provoked. <laughs> Yellowstone officials say they typically see one or two each year, and he saw them both <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> he was calm up to the very last second. Oh, no, I don't blame him. Okay, well, a woman in Mississippi didn't like the doom and gloom of social distancing, so she decided to start singing. It was so well received by her neighbors, she decided to take her show on the road, literally. Rosalind Anderson with WLBT out of Jackson has that story. I have always loved making people happy. Bellhaven resident Christina Spann didn't like the anguish and insecurity she saw, and while walking Sunday, she began to sing. Thinking she disturbed neighbors, the Jackson native wanted to say she was sorry. I heard some dogs barking, and so I posted on next door. I apologized for, you know, causing a stir. And the comments kept rolling in like, no, we heard you. We really appreciated that, especially for the workers at Baptist. They heard you. The next day, she hit the streets with boyfriend Duncan Dent at the wheel, belting out tunes from her sunroof. Working for the man every night and day. Just to see smiles on people's faces during this time was just so good. Good to see because, you know, everyone's been so stressed out and the uncertainty of things. It's really fun. We've just been like cooped up in the house for the past like week and a half. And so it's kind of nice to come outside and see a friend social distancing, but, you know, dance a little bit and have some fun. The 28 year old youth program coordinator will continue her mobile concert series, sharing her love of music, taking her tunes on the road, maybe a street near you. That was WLBT's Rosalind Anderson reporting from Jackson. What? Everybody <laughs> in the studio is grinning and laughing. What? Well, hi, Dave. How you doing? Dave Tarr. Hey, everybody. Hi, Dave. Uh, hi, hi, Dave. Yeah. We don't talk about Dave enough. Hey, Dave. Justin's here. <laughs> That's actually an ingenious idea. You know, that we're coming up with all these different things to, to keep people She's happy. She's rolling with the times. Rolling right along, man. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, mm -hmm. Leslie, you're up. You're up next. Oh yeah, no, that's not happening. No. No, no, no. Okay. You want to hear dogs bad... bark? Make that happen. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. You're lucky well, for social distancing right now. Yep. You know, it is weird times, so we have to come up with all sorts of things, uh, just like you just saw. But if if the kiddos want something to do at home, we got some weather ideas for you. You can make your own animometer. We have a little animation here. And uh, here's some of the things you could use. Cupcake liners, some thumbtack spool, cardboard strips, pencil, needle, and pen. Bear with me here. We're going to put these all together. Uh, you throw them together like that. You got the pencil, you got the pen at top, and you got the uh, cardboard strips. You attach cupcake liners, and then uh, you can put it outside. And this is basically how an anemometer works. The stronger the wind, obviously, uh, the faster it spins. And this is how a lot of times we can, we can tell wind speed. But just a cool little project you can do at home. If, uh, if you're looking for something to do science related. Uh, let's talk about the last freeze. Uh, we're pretty much past this point. Here in San Antonio, the latest freeze we ever had, April 3rd, that was back in 1987. So we can pretty much say here, we're done with any sort of freeze around San Antonio. Even Kerrville, which has their average last freeze around March 28th, we're basically there. Uh, so I, I think we're turning the corner very much so in the spring at this point. Upper level winds. Uh, there's our ridge of high pressure. That's what's kept us so warm last couple days. It is moving off to the east now, and we're starting to see a storm system come on board here across the uh, well, California region, and that's going to work towards us next couple days. It will pull a front through on Saturday. That brings us a chance for some rain, small chance, and then we'll uh, get some drier air in here for the weekend. Right now, it's still pretty hazy, 71 degrees, cloudy skies at the airport, 66. Uh, the dew point with south southeast Julie winds at about 9 miles per hour. Satellite picture shows we've got uh, quite a bit of cloud cover here over Baird County. Some high clouds looks like over top of some low clouds. So that's going to keep us cloudy for a time this morning. We are starting to see some breaks out to the west. Places like Rock Springs. Sun is now popping out, so the temperature will jump up there. 64 
uh, some fog around Uvalde, and then down to the south and east, starting to see some breaks, even a few breaks here around Atascosa County. So the sun will pop out. It'll take some time, though, for these clouds to sort of dissipate. We think that'll happen here in the next couple of hours. Visibility down about two and a half miles in Kerrville. Improving though in Uvalde and some fog there around Rock Springs being reported. Forecast high temperatures today around 88 here in San Antonio. We're going to have some variable high temperatures here because of the cloud cover. That shows 100 in Carrizo Springs. I don't think it gets that warm, but it is going to be hot there today. Mid 90s we're uh, forecasting for those folks. Uh, here's what the forecast looks like. By 6 o'clock this afternoon, sky's clear for sure, uh, but the clouds build back in. Uh, tomorrow morning, low clouds and some fog to start. Here comes our front. Next chance of rain Saturday morning. Really, it's uh, about sunrise through about lunchtime that we would see that chance for rain because by 2 o'clock it's moving out of here and we're getting clearing skies. Temperatures today up around 88 degrees. Southerly winds 5 to 15. They will be a little bit breezy from time to time. The extended forecast 87 tomorrow. 80 on Saturday behind the front and drier uh, 80 on Sunday too with 30% uh, chance of showers coming back into the forecast on Monday. Guys. Thank you, Justin. 951, 71 degrees. As we head to break, let's take a look at some of the pictures of healthcare workers around San Antonio. We'd like to introduce you to Mick, a nurse at FAMC. And this is Brittany. She is a hospice nurse. Thank you so much for all the hard work you guys do during this difficult time, especially you hospice uh, nurses. To submit a picture of healthcare workers in your life, just go to ksat.com and search for the community gallery. Well, now let's look at the forecast. We're going to be up around 88 degrees today. We'll lose those morning clouds by about the lunch hour, 87 tomorrow, and then a slight chance of some showers early on Saturday, a little cooler by the weekend, and even into next week with some more chances of rain on Monday. All right, pay attention, Mr. Horn. Okay. This is for you. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. It's an idea of how to keep the kiddos happy and give them something to do. Okay, an another great idea. Bear hunts being set up by neighbors and businesses everywhere in a bid to keep kids and parents busy during self-isolation while also adhering to social distancing. I think this is actually such a great idea. Here's what you do. The activity, which is based on the award-winning children's book, Going on a Bear Hunt, involves placing a stuffed bear <laughs> in the windows of residences or businesses. And as kids are out with their parents, either driving or walking, while maintaining six feet from the others for social distancing, they hunt for the bears. The quarantine approved scavenger hunt has gained popularity around the world and parents have shared how grateful they have been for the show. And we've actually got an article about this uh -huh. and also uh, hand painted or hand drawn rainbow pictures put up in the windows too on our website at ksat.com. Did you play that game when you were a kid? Going on a bear hunt, going I don't on a bear maybe hunt. you remember it, yes. I, I wasn't allowed out much, so I don't remember that at all. Well, you, and this is a game you can play with your kids. So listen, going on yes. a bear hunt and you, t you say what you would bring and the next person has to say yours and add one and you keep going and see if you can remember it. There you go. Good stuff. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Take care.